Now you've won gold medals. Yeah. You've, yeah. <laughs> you've, 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 you've took that way too way too casually. A gold medal is a big thing. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I've won a few. You've won a few. You've been there. You've yeah. done that. Yeah, just casually. Yeah. But you've you've done you've done amazing things your entire life. The big thing that I think a lot of people talk about is the Kokoda Trail. Yeah. You crawled the Kokoda Trail. I know there was other people who have or one certain person that has crawled the Kokoda Trail. I wonder if you could elaborate on that particular. Uh, that particular man and what Kokoda... A lot of people don't really know much about Kokoda. They know it was related to World War II, but that was pretty much it. Can you give us a bit of a backstory into what yeah. happened with you, why you decided to do it and what the entire process was? Kokoda, I think, is it's one of those unique places for Australia because it's one of the places that we fought in the direct defence of Australia. Mm. Well, we've fought in basically every conflict that has been around for the last 100 years, but... This was farmers, builders, labourers, all, you know, <laughs> signing up to go, because the, the full professional force, the majority of them were already fighting in Europe. But when the Japanese were, were advancing south, they landed in, in PNG and we sent whatever we had there. And, yeah. um, because, the, you know, there are, there are solemn places, there are places that are, that are uh, for me, like, like hallowed ground almost, that, that is that is it for Australia. Mm. Um, there were I've always been interested in in that sort of in that sort of stuff about what it is that actually makes a country unique that gives it its its fire. And Kokoda for me, and it was always there as one of those locations. Um, and I remember reading a book about Corporal John Metzen, and uh, he was he was injured through both legs, shrapnel wounds through his, uh, his shins and ankles. And he would crawl back for nearly three weeks, refusing help. Uh, he would crawl from the front as the Japanese were advancing. And he would refuse help by, from anyone until whoever was coming to assist him, there's somebody worse off further behind me. And so they would go by, they would grab somebody who, who, who probably was worth off, worse off. They'd pick him up and they'd run him by and John would just slowly progress his way back. And he made, he was shy of three weeks crawling um, and he was slowly overtaken by the advancing forces and executed before he would make it out. But he ran, he crawled back, you know, barely getting a, barely getting a fistful of rice for a feed. He saw his mates dining around him, you know, who knows the, the levels of dysentery, the, you know, what he's, what his body was going through other than the, just the wounds. But when someone does something like that, you know, man, like even when I was crawling, I was crawling and I had a full belly every night. I had my, my brothers fit and healthy around me. I, I, uh, you know, I knew that the end, was there. I knew that there was a hot bath and a credit card in my, my wheelchair waiting for me at that, that finish line. So I, I spent plenty of nights saying Corporal John Hetson, mm. Corporal John Hetson. Yeah, tough bastard. Because you, you know, obviously you crawling through that, through mud, through water, whatever the conditions were that day, you think of these people who have done things like that before you, but still the, the mental toughness has to be at a point where you know, I know for myself when things get tough, you can you can think about it before you go into something. You go, okay, I can do this. This is this is the way I need to do it. X, Y, Z. But when you're in the moment, there's those voices that go on in your head telling you, okay, this is enough. Let's give up here. It, it, someone like you has been so successful through sport. In that moment where you're doing something so difficult, are those voices still there? And how do you how do you find that you quiet them down? Yeah, the hardest part of every day was when I stopped crawling. So I stopped crawling about three o'clock till when I went to bed because uh, you'd just be running everything over in your head. And it, you were, I was scared as well. Yeah. Like I knew that it was there, but I was just scared of tomorrow. There's another nine hours in front of me. There's another three hills. There's, you know, so they were, they were the tough times, but you just back yourself that when you get to sleep, you wake up the next morning, your body be healed a little bit and you'll keep going. But there were moments that, that rocked us, that, you know, like uh, the first time I saw disability on the track, it was village one or two and like young kid, uh, young kid with a disability there, um, naked, 
isolated underneath one of the houses, just crawling around in the mud. And and uh, I, I got in my wheelchair because I could actually use my wheelchair in the villages. And I got in my chair and I pushed over to him. And I remember him being being scared of me then, mm. not knowing mm. what to do because they've never seen a guy propelling a wheelchair before, you know, like like two thirds of the world who do require a wheelchair don't have one, won't see one. And that's just the way the way it is. And that was the first time that I saw it and I got out of my chair and I, I hung around with him and then I just lost my shit. You know, mm. like I, I, by the time I was crawling away, I put a footy jersey on him. By the time I'm crawling out of the village, you know, I'm, I'm, I've lost it. And there were about half a dozen times mid crawl or moment that you've stopped or there was one time where I was one of my one of my porters who immediately after that interaction one of the guys who w was one of our porters on there went up to the boss said he's my uh, he's my brother over this next two weeks and his name was Mac never left my side Mac would throw me on his shoulder if I looked like I was a bit of a wreck and he would run me for for a couple of minutes until I'd tell him let me down let me down and <laughs> He, uh, yeah, and like there was, there was another time just lying, looking up at the trees, seeing the sun come through it as a canopy, and you just realise how many people bloody died there, mm. losing friends and mates, and yeah, it's a, it's an emotional trek. It's pretty full on.